And here, for instance, is Flannery O'Connor, and you knew I'd have to bring Flannery O'Connor into the discussion sooner or later. She wrote, I suppose when I say that the moral basis of poetry is the accurate naming of the things of God, I mean about the same thing that Conrad meant when he said that his aim as an artist was to render the highest possible justice to the visible universe. So Flannery, Joe Conrad, and I, we all agree. I'm in pretty good company. But then Flannery goes on to say, for me, the visible universe is a reflection of the invisible universe. She says St. Augustine wrote that the things of the world pour forth from God in a double way, intellectually into the minds of the angels and physically into the world of things. To the person who believes this, as the Western world did up until a few centuries ago, this physical, sensible world is good because it proceeds from a divine source. The artist penetrates the concrete world in order to find at its depths the image of its source, the image of ultimate reality. The visible universe is a reflection of the invisible universe. You would be hard pressed to find a more succinct definition of the sacramental imagination. The artist penetrates the concrete world in order to find at its depths the image of its source, the image of ultimate reality. You would be hard pressed too to find a more precise motive for Flannery O'Connor's fiction. But it is, alas, a motive she and I don't share. For as Flannery, with all the conviction of her great faith, forges ahead, penetrating the concrete world in order to find its divine source, I remain on the surface with Joseph Conrad, determined only to make you see, to use the power of the written word to create within that magical space formed by the trinity of writer, narrator, reader, something vivid and, for whatever time our three-person confluence lasts, real. Personally, I am in no way certain that the divine light shines through the things of this world, not with the kind of certainty that would sustain a 30-year career dedicated to demonstrating this through fiction. In my own experience, meaninglessness is often as good an explanation for the things of this world as is meaning. In matters of faith, I am, as, I am as aware of wordplay and disingenuousness and outdated dogma as was my agnostic grad student, not to mention the role that fear and confusion, sentimentality and shallow thinking can play when we confront our most fervent hopes and deepest terrors. The Jesuit notion of God in all things is marvelous, but it takes a faith I don't have to keep another notion one we call wishful thinking, from snapping at its heels. I am a born and bred Catholic, even a somewhat public Catholic, a practicing Catholic as well, although I sometimes joke when asked that, yes, I am still a practicing Catholic, if practicing means still working at it, still not doing it very well, certainly not yet ready to take the stage. But I approach my faith with none of O'Connor's breathtaking certainty probably not with the certainty of most of you in this room. But that personal, autobiographical stuff belongs to the real world. And as I've already pointed out, I have little worth saying about the real world. It is, the, it is only the conjured world, the universe made visible by the magic of art, that interests me and compels me to write. And it is this conjured world, this world created through the written word and with no other motive than to make you see, that I find, much to my own surprise, that something of the invisible makes itself known. I don't mean this in a supernatural way, a fiery response to my prayer to the Holy Spirit. When I was a very young writer, I was on a panel with a two other uh, women writers. One was a rather august novelist with many books uh, already published. The other was another first novelist. And when the Q&A came, the first question was, where do you get your ideas from? And the august novelist leaned forward immediately and said, the Holy Spirit. And the other first novelist right next to me 
leaned forward right after that and said, me too. <laughs> and I thought, I'm in the wrong profession. <laughs> Working steadily at words, my nose pressed to the page, so to speak, I find that meaning, perhaps even some glimmer of ultimate reality, exists in the things of this created world, not because I placed it there, but because the very effort to see, the labor of working at words, reveals it. To put it more succinctly, as a less than ardent Catholic, I do not bring a sacramental imagination to my work. I discover the sacramental while struggling merely to describe. Here's O'Connor again. It is generally supposed, and not least by Catholics, that the Catholic who writes fiction is out to prove the truth of his faith or, at the least, to prove the existence of the supernatural. What the fiction writer will discover, if he discovers anything at all, is that he himself cannot move or mold reality in the interest of abstract truth. The writer learns, perhaps more quickly than the reader, to be humble in the face of what is. What is, is all he has to do with. The concrete is his medium, and he will realize eventually that fiction can transcend its limitations only by staying within them.